President of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Paul Usoro, says the decision of the National Executive Committee of the NBA to withdraw its invites to Kaduna State Governor Natsil Erufai was not based on ethnic or religious considerations. Governor Erufai was billed as a guest speaker in the first ever virtual annual general conference of the NBA, slated for August 26th to 29th, 2020. The inclusion of Erufai, among other speakers at the event, drew the ire of some members of the association who threatened to boycott the conference if he was not dropped. The pressure was said to have compelled the leadership of the NBA to announce the withdrawal of Governor El Rufai's invite on Thursday, but this move seems to be dividing the association. Explaining the rationale for the NEC's actions yesterday, Osoro urged members to remain united as the decision was taken in the interest of the association. Joining us live to discuss this is Professor Chidi Odinkalu, former chairman of the National Human Rights Commission, NHRC. And also joining us is Seydou Basharu, political analyst. Thanks for joining us. Thanks now, for having me. to Seydou, it's been touted as a neighbor and shame occurrence. What issues could the on invitation of the Governor Erufai to speak at the NBA event raise? Indeed, um, it is a name and shame uh, occurrence because I feel the leadership of uh, the MBA have failed to own up to this because this, of course, in my own opinion, is what was intended from the onset. Uh, coming back to the question you asked, uh, there are so many outcomes. One is uh, distribute to the office of uh, the governor of Kaduna State and his person. I see problem with the credibility of NBA itself you know, because this action, in my own opinion, was not well thought out. And the consequences, what we're seeing now, the blowback is serious. And we'll be talking about this in uh, the coming days, weeks and months, maybe. Hmm. Uh, um, uh, Professor Chidi, what precedence does this set when previously invited speakers can be publicly humiliated by esteemed associations such as uh, the NBA? How does it become a problem that a disreputable person is dis is with it is our meeting MBA? That's the first thing. Okay. If Malam El Rufai were a lawyer, he would have a right to participate in the meeting because he would be entitled to be there as a lawyer. He just registered and be there at the meeting. He isn't a lawyer, and therefore his participation in any such gathering is a privilege at the disposal exclusively of the organizer. The person can extend, they can withdraw. Now, those who don't like it can decide to invite him to their meeting. They can invite him to their houses. That is a prerogative inherent in the constitutional guarantee of freedom of association. Fundamentally, what is the issue that led, persuaded the MBA? It's very simple. We've got at least three judgments of the high court in Kaduna State saying that the man persecutes lawyers. It's not just disobedience of court orders. It is that he persecutes lawyers. The latest judgment was issued by Justice Hanatu Balogu of the high court of Kaduna State last month in the case involving Gloria Balasan against uh, the governor of Kaduna State and the commission of police of Kaduna State where the governor instructed the police to blockade the office of a lawyer who was representing his critics and refuse her access to her law office. Now, if you want to invite people who are persecuting you to come to your house and abuse you, that's your problem. We don't. Now, those who don't, who don't like it are entitled not to like it. Okay? That is also inherent in the constitutional right to freedom of expression. And I will defend their right not to like it. But the idea that somehow this is the beginning of the end of Armageddon is nonsensical. Let me just say one more thing. All of these people jumping up now, when the Brininguari massacres were taking place, they all kept shtum. Zaria massacre took place, shtum. Igabi massacres took place, shtum. All of the Southern Kaduna massacres, shtum. These are people who are disreputable in themselves because they have no respect for human life. Now, so you tell me, all of this noise did not arise before now on any of the killings that took place in Kaduna. And what we are having is noise over don't attend a meeting. 
how does that even begin to make sense? Hmm. Well, Professor Odin Kalu, isn't there supposed to be a protocol to issuing these invitations in the first place that ensures that a guest is approved of by a board? Absolutely. Why invite him in the first place? Now, excuse me. Don't come to my meeting does not require any ceremony. It's, it's as simple as that. If he did not... Now, you see the point. Politicians, these fellows, okay, want us to give them social and professional capital. By the way, don't forget, Governor El Rufai has Radio Kaduna. He has TV in Kaduna State. He has one of the biggest followerships on social media in Nigeria. He's got NTA. He's got FRCN. He's got police and SSS and the soldiers that he used to abuse people. If he wants to say anything, he can say to all of these people, MBA since 1888 has registered just under 135,000 people. What is all this noise about on, to scale? Can somebody please tell me? Other than he wants the approbation of an organization uh, to give, it his, so, give him their social capital. We refuse. It's as simple as that. Okay. Um, um, Bashir, could you please react to, 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 I mean, to this issue? Why do you think he was invited in the first place? I think they wanted... Uh, uh, Obviously, they must have wanted his opinion on the crisis in Kaduna, and amongst other things. I think uh, the mistake, I do not disagree with Prof, but I think what they should have done was not even invite him in the first place. They should not have invited him. Now, what they have done now is they have missed an opportunity for him to explain his own side of the story. There are things that he may have been doing that they probably would never know. He should have been given the opportunity to share his own side of the story. What they have taken now, what, or what they have done rather, is they have taken sides, they have judged him, and he's not the only one. Look at the other people that were invited. These are people that have questionable uh, human rights records, amongst other things. But yet they are allowed to, to, share, to share their own opinion or, or give, give, uh, give a speech at that conference. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were being fair. And in my own opinion, they have missed an opportunity to allow the man to share, let them confront him and ask him why he, he, he harassed lawyers or he did all the things that he did. That would have been a good opportunity for them to, to express their uh, dis, 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 uh, dis, uh, dissatisfaction with what he had done. But they never gave him that opportunity. Hmm. They invited him and eventually just turned him down. I mean, just imagine that it wasn't even the governor, whoever it is. You are invited, and then suddenly you hear that, oh, sorry, you're not, you're no longer invited. You'll not be happy about things. How I think the about original LFI's intention response? was to embarrass him and embarrass mm -hmm. that institution. And that they should be bold to come out and say that it that is what it is. NBA is a pressure, pressure uh, organization, and they want to make a statement. Stick by that. Don't go around talking about numbers and things like that. Tell us that, look, you need to make a, a statement. We're not happy with you. And that's the reason why we did this. Mm. How it about Eurofi's response opinion, to this? And it's a missed opportunity. Mm. So would you say the NBA ha has taken sides or does it come across this way? That is exactly what I'm saying. It seems to me that sides have been taken because the man has not been given a fair opportunity to share his own side of the story. Hmm. So, um, how about this conversation? Why does this seem to have descended into an ethno-religious trade by Bata? I mean, we can or Basenjo versus uh, uh, Erufai. Of course, when you leave opportunities like this, people would jump in with all sorts of, you know, people would take advantage. There would be ethnic sentiments, religious sentiments, which is what Nigeria has been reduced to now. Hmm. Of course, people will take the sides. Uh, Professor Odinkalu, you've tweeted words to the effect that the governor does not deserve a fair hearing since he's artificially tipped the skills in his favor by influencing media outlets. So what would you then say that the NBA's response is a just one? Look, let me tell you my own personal story, okay? So that I'll, we get rid of this thing about, um, you know, Saido's point about fair hearing. Number one, El Rufai said that nobody can challenge him. And because if you challenge him, that look at who are the people that challenged him. He said, uh, President Yaradua challenged him, he's in the grave. And President Jonathan challenged him, he's in Otuoke. Now, we are poor lawyers. If the man can kill a president, 
and send another president to Otuoke. Why do you want me to go and challenge him? Are, are you okay? Let the people who want to die go and challenge him. We're not going to challenge him in our meeting. That's not, this is, these are his words. He said, if you, if you attack me, you are finished. He finished the Yaradua into the grave. He finished Jonathan into Otuoke. Are you going to challenge him, madam? That's number one. Number two, I tried. On the 15th of February last year, El Rufai went on television to say that 66 Fulanis had been killed in an Adera community in Kajuru. And I spoke with the police, I spoke with National Emergency, um, uh, what, uh, the uh, Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. I spoke with humanitarians in Kajuru. Every one of them said no. The police were willing to go on record and say nothing like that happened. NEMA in Kajuru said nothing like that happened. I challenged El Rufai on record. Come and show us where this you claim this thing happened. What and this was the day he made this statement, the day before the scheduled presidential election. Okay, which was exit. What did he do? The man went and got an order from a magistrate in Kaduna in a case without a case number to abduct me. All right, mm -hmm. I'm not the first lawyer that the man tried to abduct. He abducted um what uh Audumekori from Lagos, because Audu disagreed with him. He tried to abduct Gloria Ballasin from Kaduna. He has abducted Stephen Kefferson from, uh, from Port Harcourt. Now, if you are telling me to go and, uh, and challenge a man who likes abducting, and by the way, Daddy Yata was abducted from Banawa in Kaduna and is still missing. And El Rufai's son, Bashir, went on, uh, on Twitter on the 24th, on the 19th of December last year, to gloat over the disappearance of Daddy Yatta. Daddy Yatta has not been found over one year later. Why would anybody in their correct senses go and say anything about him? By the way, another of El, El Rufai's sons, Bello, told a, a man who criticized his father on Twitter that he was going to arrange the gang rape of his mother. Are you okay? Will you go and criticize that kind of person? Mm. Turning now to Mr. Basharu, surely we want a situation where our leaders feel our pain and are attentive to our concerns. So from that point of view, could you say the NBA's response is an effective one? I would not say it is an effective. It's not been effective because we can see the pushback. It's taking ethnic and religious dimension, which has missed the intent. The original intention was to make a point, to let the governor know that you know, this association is not happy with what he's doing and the way he's been handling the situation in Kaduna. But look at how it has panned out. You know, they would have given him the opportunity to come there and, you know, lambast him in that crowd. I think that would have been the best opportunity rather than allowing that. Look at what has happened now. The organization, the NBA today, has lost a lot of credibility, in my own opinion, because people are now using, using all sorts of... They're, they're using tribal... You can see the lines is taken different groups from different regions saying that, oh, no, it's because he's a Muslim, it's because it's this and that, you know. And this is, I believe, was not the original intention. So an opportunity has been missed by not allowing him, you know, to come and share his own side of the story and allowing whoever has grounds with him. I, I'm, I'm very sorry about what happened to you, Prof. You know, I, I, I can, I'm not here. I don't have any relationship with uh, El Rufai, but I just think it's a missed opportunity that the NBA would have had if they had allowed him to have that day and, you know, allowed all the lawyers to ask whatever it is they have against him. Mm. But Saidu, are you going to give me a balaclava to ask him a question? I'm, I'm giving you names, places, dates of people who have tried to criticize El Rufai and his family and what has happened to them. And you're telling me, continue asking him questions. Yaradua is dead. Jonathan is in Otuoke. I am facing imprisonment. Uh, uh, Audume Kori yeah. was abducted. Stephen Kefferson yeah. abducted, detained for five months. Uh, uh, Gloria Ballason has got three judgments and she is living under a court order. These are human beings who try to, to criticize El Rufai. Why should another person do so? You're not asking, answering that question, sir. No, do you have any please. response to I that, uh, Bashar, before we go on? I, well, I cannot take, I can tell you, but I don't uh, want to believe that anybody that criticizes El Rufai would disappear. Oh, I know another bishop, have... a bishop who, who told him he would not be Nigeria's president, has been charged with criminal intimidation of El Rufai, right? All right, all right. Uh, thank you, thank you so much uh, for your thoughts right now. But before we go, I would like to ask you what you think is the way forward, Professor Odin Kalu.
I'm sorry, disreputable people like this should not be accorded social capital. If he wants to be invited, let Boko Haram invite him. He can go and address them and he can go and tell him, tell them whatever he wants. That is Bro. fine. But those people who continue to accord people like this social capital are destroying the country. The man belongs to his place. Let him fix Kaduna. When he fixes it and stops toxifying the country, he can come into civilized audiences. Hmm. And how about you, Mr. Bashiru? Yeah. What do you think is the way forward from here? Yes, I, I think we should, um, this should be a lesson for us. What I think the NBA should have done is constitute themselves into, you know, forming pressure groups where the kind of leaders you expect would emerge. Today, these are our leaders. You understand? And it's whatever we refer to them that the rest of the world would use to assess us today. We call ourselves all sorts of names and will not get respect globally if we address our leaders this way. If you want better leaders, then make sure that you, you, you empower, you advocate for people who you think would, give, would take us to where, where, where you'd want us to. But the leaders we have today are the ones we have and we have to treat them as such. Hmm. Chidi Odinkalu, Professor Chidi Odinkalu, as well as uh, uh, Saidu Basharu, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this issue with us. Thanks a lot, Saidu, and thanks a lot.